$430,000 worth of debt. She is working as an associate veterinarian for about $100,000 a year, but I think in the end of the story, the debt came out, I guess, overall, she would have had $700,000 total because of accumulating interest. I mean, that is insane amounts of money. It really is. And, yeah, Sarah was using a calculator provided by a veterinary industry group that allows you to project your student loans. And, and obviously, there are lots of unknowns. You don't know exactly uh, what your rate, your salary is going to increase. It's hard to estimate all these things precisely. But the way it works is you pay 10% of your discretionary income on these income-driven repayment plans, and that doesn't cover the interest payment. The interest on these $400,000, $500,000 loans is so high that after years and years and years, you owe, or you can owe, far more than you started. So it's really psychologically daunting for a lot of people to be making payments, to be making substantial payments, and just see their balances grow and grow and grow. The school really matters as well. You may mention in the article for dentistry programs, University of Southern California in Los Angeles and New York University in New York City. In some cases, the median debt was more than four times as much as the median earnings that graduates were getting. NYU specifically with uh, their dentist program, they say, you know, you could expect to pay 572000 for its four-year program. This includes living expenses. And then in the contrast, there was another school out of North Carolina, which the program is geared to people who are going to stay in the area, in the state, and their debt is way low. Schools like NYU and USC are among the most expensive in the country. And, and one of the things that, for dentistry, and one of the things that we've been writing about this year is the sort of allure of these big names. We only have early career earnings data on the school level, and because, for example, in New York State you have to do a residency for dentistry, it's not fully clear what their earnings are going to be. But again, nationally, the median pay of dentists is about 160, so we're not looking at astronomical median pay for dentists. But there, you know, certainly are higher paid dentists than that, and so. With these schools, it can be very expensive. There's a premium to choosing it. And I, and I think, you know, in terms of the state school in North Carolina, which is granted has, you know, it is for in-state residents, but something like that is more manageable and they're conscious of the fact that they want people to serve rural communities. Yeah, that's East Carolina University. Well, they only accept applicants from uh, state residents and their graduates carried a median debt of about 131000 but their income, the median income, was about 120000 So much, much more manageable on that front right there. Still a little over one-to-one, -one, sure. but much closer than a lot of these other dental programs. And certainly, you know, we haven't mentioned chiropractic yet, but those were the programs that had the worst debt loads generally compared to earnings. I mean, chiropractors were borrowing six, seven times the earning. And so what is being done to address the issue, help the issue, uh, help the students? I know after, like we said, 20, 25 years, there's the federal loan forgiveness, but as you mentioned, over the long term, that's not going to be untenable. So what are they trying to do? How do they remedy it? <laughs> that's a good question. I think the political debate right now is very much about student loan forgiveness and then not so much about addressing these more systemic issues. I think that costs are continuing to climb, and I don't know if we have seen any evidence that that's going to change. Graduate programs are generally seen as revenue drivers, money makers for universities. Undergraduates from low-income backgrounds get heavy subsidies, but that's not really true at graduate school. And I think there's an assumption that you know, if we keep raising costs on the dentists and the veterinarians and the lawyers, they're in these professional fields that make a lot of money and so they'll be able to pay it off. And that isn't necessarily the case. Yeah. And so there really are lingering systemic issues out there. Andrea Fuller, reporter at the Wall Street Journal. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Dive Weekend Edition. You can catch a fresh episode of the podcast every morning, Monday through Friday, on iHeartRadio. You can also follow us on social media, at Daily Dive Pod, on both Twitter and Instagram. Stay tuned for the Jesus Christ Show next, 
But first, into the newsroom. This is KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk. The 11th annual KFI Pastathon is here. Helping Chef Bruno provide over 25,000 meals to hungry kids every week. All donations go to Katarina's Club, feeding children in Southern California. Donate at Pastathon.com. K-F-I. And K-O-S-T H-D-2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live everywhere on the iHeart Radio app. I'm Layla Mohammed, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A pair of Long Beach cops have been busted for allegedly filing false reports. Officers Deddy A. Reyes and David Salcido surrendered Friday after warrants were issued for them for a firearms arrest more than three years ago. In February 2018, detectives noticed discrepancies between their reports and surveillance video. Long Beach PD says their actions were inconsistent with their written reports. The arrestee was released with no charges. Both cops were booked for filing a false police report and filing a false government document. Reyes, a 16-year veteran, was also booked for perjury. Salcido has five years in. Both were given $1 bail and have been suspended from the department. Mark Rahner, KFI News. A judge has denied the Los Angeles City Firefighters Union request for a preliminary injunction that would prevent enforcement of a COVID-19 vaccine mandate for its members. A Los Angeles County Superior Court judge issued a ruling in the matter on Friday. Judge Mary Strobel said even if all of the 789 unvaccinated Los Angeles Fire Department employees leave their jobs as a result of the vaccine mandate, the department has developed a contingency staffing and firehouse plan to ensure public safety. At least 10 people on board the Norwegian breakaway cruise ship have tested positive for COVID-19. The NCL cruise ship departed New Orleans on a week-long cruise. November 28th, it has stops in Belize, Honduras, and Mexico. The ship is returning to New Orleans this morning. Everyone on board will be tested for COVID before leaving and will be provided with post-exposure and quarantine public health guidance by the CDC. News brought to you by Rooter Hero. The parents of the alleged school shooter in Michigan have pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter in court. James and Jennifer Crumbly are in jail after they were found in an art facility building in Detroit. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Brochard says that it was a teamwork effort that led to their arrest. Everybody pitched in. Uh, we were confident we'd be able to find them in short order and because of that teamwork we did. The sheriff says all three family members are being held at the jail campus in Oakland County, but have been separated since being taken into custody. They have not spoken to each other. The parents are being held on $500,000 bail each. CNN News anchor Chris Cuomo has been fired. Cuomo has been suspended earlier this week after new information came out about him helping his brother, former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, fight sexual harassment allegations. From the Southern California Toyota Dealers Traffic Center, we make it easy. An accident has cleared on the 10 in Santa Monica. Yeah, a big wreck there on the 10 freeway at the McClure Tunnel. We had the left lane taken away on both sides for a while. The wreck is gone, and earlier congestion has thinned out dramatically. South 110 right by the Santa Monica Freeway into downtown L.A. Earlier problem had the left lane shut down. That's been pushed off to the right side. And for the most part, good speeds on both sides of the Harbor Freeway into and out of downtown L.A. No major time reported right now for any of our freeways in Orange County. Just caught this one at the Valley Way off ramp westbound on the 16 near Rubido. That's wood debris in the two middle lanes. Looks like somebody hit that. They've got some damage and off to the right shoulder. And while we're in the Inland Empire, a new problem just popped up on the 210 eastbound Riverside Avenue off ramp. They're running a break right now to clear something off to the right shoulder. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Bill Thomas. Why would a plumber just tell me what it costs to unclog my drain over the phone? Is it that complicated? No, it's not. It makes no sense at all. They obviously have a price. Whoa, you've got a nice aroma. Who are you? Mike Diamond, the smell good plumber. Will you tell me how much to unstop my drain? $99. But you haven't seen it. Don't need to. Doesn't matter if it's a kitchen sink or a mainline sewer stoppage. The Smell Good Plumbers at Mike Diamond will unclog almost any drain for $99. Almost? Yeah, there are a few exceptions, but you can read all about them on our website before you call. Just go to thesmellgoodplumber.com. Wow, you're like up front in everything. I just called a guy named Bubba who wouldn't tell me anything. No Bubba's here, ma'am. Just professional plumbers who show up on time, smell good, and unclog drains for $99. Call us. 1-800-446-MIKE. Contractor license number 39917. I want to break free! 
Are you ready to break free? Norwegian Cruise Line's greatest deal ever is here. Book today and enjoy 70% off the second guest. Plus, receive seven free offers, including free open bar, free specialty dining, free air for second guests, and much more. Up to $4,250 yes, an hour. Visit SPL.com, call your travel advisor, or one day to any of your cruise. Offer in soon. Norwegian Cruise Line. Sail safe, feel free. This registry, the Bahamas and USA. Restrictions apply. If you want to sell your car fast, Roto. If you want it to be hassle-free, Roto. If you want to make more money on your trade, yep, oh, Roto. That's R-O-Z-O. Roto is the best place to buy a new car, and it's also car. the best place to sell your used car or vehicle lease for quick payment. That's right. Cash offers for used cars have never been higher. So act now. Right, Download the Roto app or go to Roto.com. That's R-O-Z-O, the fastest way to sell your car. Now, retirement means different things to different people, right? The pandemic was an eye-opener to lots of us. It showed us what retirement might be like, and for many of us, it's a tempting alternative to work. But work has also shown us that to do those things we really want to do 24-7, we need to be able to fund them properly. You can't travel without money, you can't play golf without belonging to the golf club, and you can't buy that ranch without the cash either. It looks like traditional savings routes are going to be hit by inflation. So, will your returns beat it, or will you be going backwards? It might be time to talk to Noble Gold. They've helped thousands of people like you to have comfortable retirements using the tax advantages of precious metals IRAs. This month, Noble Gold is giving away a free oh, America the Beautiful you. Solid yeah. Silver 5-ounce yeah. coin with any qualifying plan you start. So visit noblegoldinvestments.com or call us at 877-646-5347. So visit noblegoldinvestments.com or call us at 877-646-5347. Southland weather from KFI, a foggy start to our Sunday, and a dense fog advisory in effect for L.A. County and San Gabriel Valley, including the cities of Pasadena, San Gabriel, and Pomona. That advisory is in effect until 9 o'clock this morning with a visibility a quarter of a mile or less. Highs will be in the 60s at the beaches, upper 60s to low 70s for the L.A. Basin and Inland O.C., upper 70s in the Valley, 10 I.E. Right now it's 54 degrees in Costa Mesa, 50 in Brea, 50 in Glendale, 48 in West Covina. We lead local, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Layla Mohammed. The following is a pre-recorded program. Sunday as I'm with you every single Sunday right here, answering your questions and talking about the things that truly matter in life, and of course the afterlife. I encourage you to be bold and brave and go to the phone with your theology question or life situation question anywhere in the U.S. of A. Dial 800-520-1534. That's 800-520-1534. Around this time of the year, 
everywhere you look, you're out and about, family, friends, working, doing whatever, you'll see people putting lights on everything. Their houses, Christmas trees, lights become the focus in so many ways around this time of the year. Lighting becomes a theme of sorts for the holidays. And it's something special about this, actually. There's something about light that gets attention, stirs people's emotions. If you have seen movies or have been to Las Vegas, you see the lights everywhere. It's been uh, kind of a ongoing theme with Las Vegas. Bigger, better, brighter. You go in any Main Street, USA, you'll see lights uh, trying to get the attention of the people that go by. Hey, over here, shop over here, look at what we have over here. These are our services over here. All with light, blinking, flashing, bright, colorful lights. In Scripture, you're called to be the light unto the world. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's a good word. You may take light for granted. It's everywhere. It's easy to use. You flip a switch. It comes on. But it wasn't always that way. There's something precious about it. When you're called to be the light of the world in Scripture, there's something special about that. To be bright, shining throughout any time that you could be seen, kind of like those beacons in front of those stores we talked about, blinking, flashing, with all their color and all their brightness to get the attention of those that go by. When you do acts of kindness, when you live your faith out loud so that people can see it, People see and take notice. They'll take notice of the things you're doing. They'll take notice of how you are and how you act. And in turn, this glorifies God, as it says in Matthew 5. It glorifies God because people see the things you're doing. People see how you're acting. So when you live your faith out loud, it, just, it covers all the senses. People will know what you believe by the way you live. To love God is to want to be better, to want to be a better you. To take the time to purify yourself each and every day. As a process, the same you would to keep clean or have hygiene uh, physically. This spiritual hygiene is a, is a process every single day. To cleanse yourself in a way that people will take notice. You want to be a light for others, a, a living example to those around you. And when you're honest about yourself, you show those around you the things that you do well, so they can give credit to God. Obviously, the glory goes to God. But also those things that you don't do so well. Those are seen, too, as long as you respond properly to them, others will see them and they'll learn from them and grow the same as you. The light that you, you shine in every day is the knowledge of your salvation through the death uh, and on the cross and the resurrection. If you get caught up in just your everyday life, and the things you have, the tasks, the things you have to do each day. You'll lose sight of the bigger picture, the more important picture. 
And with the holidays here, of course, there are things that are pulling your, your attention in every which way. But this is a great opportunity, a great time of the year for you to, to check yourself and make sure that you're living in a way or expressing your faith in a way that glorifies the Father. That you are that light on the hill. You can tell when somebody tries to hide a lot. As it says in Matthew 5, you don't, if you have a lamp, you don't put it under a bowl. What a silly illustration if you think about that. To take, at this time, lighting a candle and putting it under a bowl where it is of no use to anyone. On the contrary, the scripture says that you put it on a stand, you put it high, you put it where everyone can see it and everyone gets use of it. So if you come across either a time in your life or other people in your life and you find that they're always looking for a path to the darkest place or a place to hide, they're not living and maybe you're not living in that, in that healthy space looking to, to shine your light. It's not about pride. It's not about glorifying yourself. On the contrary, it's about glorifying God. It's pointing to God just as the, as the moon reflects the light of the sun and gives glory to the sun immediately when you look at the moon, knowing that it's not giving its own light. The same happens when you uh, exude and illumine with, with who you are and the things you've learned through Scripture and the things you've learned from other believers, the things you've learned from living life in a godly way. Well, by, by doing that, by shining that light, it gives glory to God. That light, that, that passion for salvation and for the things of God, points back to God. It, it shows that you are a believer. It shows that you know the reality of what took place in the cross and the really importance of the resurrection. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Light, so important, over and over in Scripture, used as an illustration of those things that are good. Darkness doesn't want anyone to look upon it. Darkness wants to hide. Darkness wants to sit in a place where nobody can see the good things or the imperfections. But when you look good or feel good physically, don't you want to go out everywhere? Don't you want people to see you? And that can be tied to vanity. That can be tied to pride. But imagine having inside you such a burst and a desire to show people the love of God that you have. And I'm not talking about standing on a corner with a bull. I'm talking about living in such a way that, that you shine that you are a, a physical, living, breathing example of being that light to the world. When you find yourself running from being seen, when you find yourself hiding, Jars are there.
Kitty Foxy, free fire. Kitty Foxy, free fire. Climb inside the 2011 Buick Regal. Re-entering the marketplace in grand style, the all-new Regal returns newly reincarnated as a sports sedan, challenging European competitors. This four-door, five-passenger sedan is ready to drive off the showroom floor. The electronically controlled six-speed automatic transmission features driver shift control, so manual operation is just a tap away. The engine breathes better thanks to a turbocharger, improving both performance and economy. Confidence and poise are expressed throughout the exterior. A confident footprint is created via the 18-inch alloy wheels. Once inside, the attention to safety and security is obvious. You'll notice that the headroom and legroom make even the longest drives enjoyable. Comfort and convenience were prioritized within, evidenced by amenities such as ultrasonic rear park assist, a 12-way power driver's seat, and leather upholstery. Open up the available sunroof and listen to your favorite songs on the premium 9-speaker Harman Kardon audio system. You'll see better when backing up, thanks to rear park assist, which watches out for obstacles behind your vehicle. 2011 Buick Regal. Well equipped and fully capable, this vehicle handles with the agility and response of a sports sedan. You see. You see that when I'm backing up, this is my process. We also have bus or highways. You see that when I'm backing up, this is my process. Dizzy Frozen.
right here. You want to hug? This guy's right to in there. He's quite deep. It's nothing personal. Oh, uh, you are the first I have to take you both. I'll see you in the house. Oh, I think a I say. Oh, what? 